You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Sue Dornan's bizarre quiz program, Aftermath. The Grand Prize. Starring Monty Martin. In the Mutual Broadcasting System presentation of... Zero Hour. Brought to you by the Ford Motor Company and Lazy Boy Recliners. This is the Zero Hour on Mutual Radio. When seldom gets something for nothing. A possible exception is the quiz show contestant. For the price of an answer, one can win money and gifts. Today, the story of a winner. Karen Harkness, a young woman with more right answers than anyone suspects, is on her way to collect the grand prize. And now, let's bring back today's big winner, Miss Karen Harkness of Stratford, Connecticut. Okay, Karen. Do you know how this part of the show goes? Yes, Lee, I do. All right, then. Light up the puzzle. Karen, would you select an envelope, please? Thank you. Ah, your number is 54 down. That's 17 letters with only five filled in so far. Ray Sorensen, would you tell us what Karen will win if she can fill in the blanks? Lee, if Karen can do it, she'll look like a queen because the prize is this. Oh. A cultured pearl necklace courtesy of Vincent LaDuke, famous the world over for exquisite jewelry. And that's not all. What is a queen without a king? A weekend of royalty is yours to win. An all-expenses-paid weekend at Glamorous Lake Tahoe with that famous star of stage and screen... King Woodward! Thank you, Ray! Wow! Are you nervous, Karen? A little. Well, here goes. Let's see now. Oh, yeah, the clue is Ethan Allen's men. Think it over. Uh, Green Mountain Boys! Karen, you've just won a gorgeous oh. necklace! And... Oh. Here he is now. Ladies and gentlemen, and Karen, meet King Woodward! That does it. Uh, was that the necklace, Mr. LeDuc? Of course it was. I thought Sorensen was bluffing. Well, I could take uh, Sorensen. Oh, that can wait, Jesse. But the necklace can't. The Iceman expects delivery on Monday. Yeah, but the, the girl's got it. The girl and that actor. Jesse... Go get Gwen. For her, a setup like this should be a breeze. Stu, I absolutely refuse to go through with this. King, I had to kiss a lot of feet to get you that spot on the show. Mm -hmm. Famous star of stage and screen. I wrote that copy. Friend, your career's on the ropes. Well, I'll take the mandatory eight count, thank you. Look, King, be reasonable. The fan magazines will eat it up. They're sending a whole publicity crew along. I'm not spending the weekend with that girl no matter what. You won't have to. Just be seen with her. That's all. That's all? A couple hours during the days. So now, don't worry. You'll be chaperoned. By who? That jerk MC, Lee Bates? No, by your jerk manager, Stu Greenfield. You're coming along? You got it. Oh, terrific. Open the window, would you, Jesse? Yeah. Hey, it's real nice up here in Tahoe, you know, Gwen? We're here on business, remember that. Yeah, I ain't forgetting. Hey, come here. Isn't that them? Over, over by the lake? I think so. Yeah, who, who's the other guy? It must be the manager. LaDuke told me about him. But Woodward's the one we can reach. Woodward is supposed to be, you know, a real uh, lady chaser. <laughs> well, I plan to give that hunk of man something to chase. Mr. Woodward, I'm really embarrassed by this whole thing. I can understand that you don't really want to be here with me. Hey, nonsense, Miss Harkness. 
King's just a little moody. Uh, well, I think I'll be moody back at the end, if you don't mind. Hello, King Stair. No, that's all right. Enjoy your walk. Hey, remember the press party, 5 o'clock, in the lobby. That's a beautiful necklace you have. Thank you, but somehow it's not right for me either. All of this. Mr. Greenfield, do I have to go to the party? Hey, now don't you be moody, too. Let's walk down to the boat dock. After that, we'll go back to the hotel and get dressed for the party. Now, what do you say? Well? In my business. That means yes. Come on. What took you so long? Dressed already? Listen, I thought it over. Still, I'm going over the state line and gamble. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Now, King, wait. Look, at least until after the party... Then you can jump in the lake as far as I'm concerned. What's eating you? The way you're treating that girl. <laughs> hey, I thought you were the chaperone. Hey, do yourself a favor and stick around. I'm getting a shower. Well, I'm not waiting around for this. Hey, get that, would you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Is this King Woodward the actor? Yeah, who are you? Oh, let's just say that I'm an admirer of yours. I'd like to meet you in person. When? After the press party, a tall blonde wearing a red strapless gown will be standing at the base of the staircase. That will be me. All right. I'm a gambling man. Good. I've got a sporting proposition for you. Oh, yeah? Like what? I'll tell you when I see you. What are the odds? A tall blonde in a red strapless gown? King, honey, you can't lose. <laughs> Is that you? Go back to sleep, Stu. Mm. No, I have to talk to you. Where's your key to Karen's room? What happened to you? Did you walk into a door? Someone roughed me up. Did you call a cop? I mean, a house detective or something? No, I wanted to speak to you first. The guy said you were in on it. The guy who hit you? Who was he? I don't know, but I'd recognize that fist anywhere. Where have you been all night? I jumped in the lake. Don't be cute, friend. This is serious. What do you know about the pearl necklace Karen won on the show? What do you know about it? Somebody wants it, and they thought I had it. Do you have it? No. And you still haven't told me where you've been. You just vanished after the press party. We made the gossip columnists very happy. One of them told me you snuck off with a blonde. Well, yeah, maybe you did. So what? All right, what's so important in Karen's room that you have to get in there at this hour? The necklace? What if it is? Hey, look, King, I'll take a lot, but this is too much. Now, what do you know about the necklace? All right, I was offered $10,000 for it. I mean, it looks like your deal wasn't as good. Yeah, well, it looks like maybe you're not the grand prize after all. Where are you going? Come on, your highness. I had Karen bolt the door from the inside, but that may not have been enough. I thought you said it was bolted. Yeah, I thought it was. Turn on the light. She's gone. I was afraid of this. The place is cleaned out. Maybe she packed up and left. That I doubt. Why didn't you stay in the room with her? Now, why didn't you stick around like I asked you to? If anything's happened to that girl, King, we're finished. Stu, I've never seen you like this. You ain't seen nothing yet. I guess the desk clerk's not here. Stu, what are you doing? Just keep an eye out. Tell me if anyone's coming. Uh, okay, but... Uh, well, Karen's key's not here, so she hasn't checked out. There's a note in our box. What's it say? Gentlemen, you have 24 hours for the contest. Leave the pearl necklace in the third hole on the pitch and putt golf course near the lake, and you win the girl. Don't ask the law for help, or you'll lose the game. <laughs> The girl won't talk. Oh, you idiot. If you had waited, Woodward would have gotten us the pearl. Now, but Gwen, the Iceman. Never mind the Iceman. Maybe the girl did lose the necklace, like she says. And it's up to her friends to find it. They got it, they tell you. Doesn't look that way from here. Huh? Down there, by the lake. Yeah. Look for yourself. How should I know where the necklace is? I mean, you were the one who's been with her. Well, if they have her and she doesn't have it, who does? Stu, if I knew, I'd tell you. I mean, she wore it all the time. Maybe it fell off at the press party. Wait a minute. 
she didn't have it on last night. She must have. How would you know? You never looked at her. I'm telling you, she wasn't wearing it. Why don't we just call the cops? I mean, let them handle it. You know what the note said. Now, look, these people aren't fooling around. Now, what about the blonde? Did she say why she wanted the necklace? I wasn't really listening. How the help you are. What about the guy who punched you out? He mumbled something about the wrong prize. Then he started punching me out. The wrong prize? What does that mean? I don't know. He said he couldn't wait for you to deliver, and then the lights went out. Honest, Stu, I don't know what it's about. I mean, the blonde made me an offer. We had a few drinks, and we fooled around a little, and that's it. Then I told her I'd get the necklace. Now, Karen had it on when we were walking here yesterday. You stormed off. We took a walk. Back to the hotel. Where'd you walk to? Down to the boat dock. She was depressed, thanks to you. D listen, don't blame it on me. Hey, maybe it fell off. Come on. This is the way we went. Keep your eyes open. Hey, Gwen, uh, uh, don't go in. Quiet, don't go. I'm on the phone. Yes, Mr. LeDuc. What do you mean you had to kidnap the girl? Well, Jesse couldn't keep his hands to himself. He beat up the manager. Oh, I'll tell Jesse... Oh, never mind. We got more trouble. Sorensen wasn't on the quiz show yesterday. I called. They said he's on vacation. What? So now we have to deliver that necklace. Gwen, I'm counting on you. I'll get the necklace. You have my word. And then we walked out here to the end. I remember I was watching the water skiers... Karen was brooding. She said something about feeling out of place. The whole thing was a mistake. You, the necklace. Oh, no. What is it? I thought it was a rock. It must have been the necklace. She threw it in the lake. you think the press people are going to buy that story about Karen being sick? Long enough for us to find a necklace, I hope. We can't drag the lay. We'll never find it. Not that one. You're not thinking about buying a fake, are you? We can't sit on the shore and wait for the tide to come in. I'll get it. Yeah. Hello, handsome. Uh, hiya, Blondie. We uh, got your message. Tell her we have it. I'm sorry about the change in plans. We have the necklace. You do? I saw you and your friend walk right by the golf course. Why didn't you drop it off then? Well, uh, we didn't have it then. But you do have it now. Yes. Leave it where we said. Midnight tonight. The girl will be returned once we have it. Hey, these pearls look real to me. I hope it fools them. The blonde may be a knockout, but she's no metal giant. And we know what room they're in. We do? There's only one room in the hotel with the vantage point she described. I double-checked. Come midnight, you drop off the fake pearls, and I'll be up in that room. Mm -hmm. I'll take my chances if there's just one of them there. Who's that? Greenfield, where's the necklace? Sorensen? The girl's not in her room. If I don't get it back, I'm a dead man. Why does everyone want that necklace? What do you mean, everyone? Is LeDuc here? What, LeDuc, the jeweler? Oh, jeweler. LeDuc's an international smuggler. I had it wired. With those pearls, I could have skipped the country and been set for life, but I blew it. Where's the girl? She's around. Why? Does she have the necklace? Again, why? All right, I'm in a spot. LeDuc owes somebody a lot of money, and that somebody expects that necklace as payment. I was the middleman. LeDuc wasn't paying me what I thought I was worth, so I threatened to give the pearls to somebody else. Karen Harkness. Right. I knew LeDuc would see the show on television and think I gave the girl the real thing. I meant to give her a fake, but I got them mixed up. I'll say you did. Look, I I've changed my mind. I am going to deliver the real pearls if I can find them. All right, what do you know about a big-knuckled gorilla and a sneaky blonde? Jesse and Gwen. They work for LeDuc. Are they here in Tahoe? Yeah, you bet they are. Underneath my dark glasses are two beautiful shiners. Well, I'll make it worthwhile for both of you. But I've got to have that necklace. Give the girl these. She'll never know the difference. Sorensen, I think we can do business. Here's what I want you to do. All right, Sorensen, you know what to do. Put those fakes of yours into the third hole at midnight. When do I get the real ones? Just do like he says, announcer. And meet us back at the room. We'll see you there. guest. I admire your loyalty to your friends and theirs to you. It appears that you didn't lose the pearls after all. They have them and they're trading them for you. <laughs> I know you're trying to express your gratitude. I'll pass along the message. Hey, Gwen, Gwen, it's time. What are friends for? Uh, 
They made the drive. Good. Be ready to leave when I get back. What about the girl? Get her ready, too. Yeah. She's gone. When do we go in? Well, now's a good time. Hiya, Jesse. Remember me? I think I owe you this. Where'd you learn to hit like that? He taught me. Come on, let's get Karen out of here. You go. This is your seat. Room service? There's Mr. Greenfield in the honeymoon suite. Send up champagne on ice. Thank you. Do I like Hawaii much better than Lake Tahoe. I like your wedding ring much better than pearls. This is the first good thing that's happened to me since I won the grand prize. Is that a compliment? Poor Mr. Sorensen. He wasn't like the others, but they all went to jail. Oh, but Benson LaDuke, he delivered the wrong merchandise to his connection. A mistake he didn't live to regret. I'd rather not talk about the past. Oh, well, how about the future? Oh, look at the time. Karen, not the television. Shh. Your number is 11 across. That's nine letters with only two filled in so far. King Woodward, would you tell us what Marsha will win if she can fill in the blanks? Look, there's King. Lee, if Marsha can do it, she'll be going to a luau. Two weeks, all expenses paid in the island paradise. No. Yes, beautiful Hawaii. It's my fault I got him Sorensen's job. King looks so happy. Oh, what about me? You'll be happy, too. And you? I'm the happiest one of all. I've got you, and I've still got these. Well, those are the pearls I bought in Tahoe. A memento of our courtship? No, I left those on the mainland. You what? One thing you should know about your bride, Stuart Greenfield. She never throws anything away. I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes. Exercise your imagination. And join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. The Grand Prize is an original radio drama written by Sue Donnelly. Marty Markham was heard as Stu Greenfield. Featured in the cast were Keith Walker, Jenny Tyler, Jane Webb, Don Messick, and Dawes Butler. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Coates. Directed by Don Hills, is produced in Hollywood. Mutual Broadcasting System, a radio productions in Portland. Music is composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman, Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System.